Team on us 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to the Twisted 10, bringing you original and unique host created top 10 lists recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. All right, welcome to your second episode of the Twisted 10. Uh, we take top 10 lists from our lives, from our experiences, and from our influences and bring them to the listeners. Uh, these are not ten, top 10 lists that you'll find online. I mean, you might find something similar, but you're not going to find what comes out of our imaginations. Uh, I'm one of your hosts today. My name is Adam, and sitting to my left is... I am Tack. How you doing, Tack? What's going on, buddy? Man, not a whole lot. Seems like it was just yesterday we were recording the first episode. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um... So let's hop right into this, Tack. Would you – so I've listened to a lot of podcasts. I've heard, you know, a ton of them. You host uh, Taint Funny. We host Living Podcariously. We now host this as well. I listen to Star Talk. I listen to Nerdist. I Whatever. I listen to a ton of podcasts. I know you do too. I do too. Out of all those podcasts, have you ever sat back and listened to the the other hosts and just either were fascinated with how intelligent they sounded or scratched your head saying, how the hell does this guy get sponsors because he's a dumbass or (laughs) or she's a dumb – you know, whatever. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Well, where would you rate us in comparison? Because you know us pretty well. I mean, you know you pretty well. Where <laughs> would like, you rate I us? I like to think I do. Where would you rate us on intelligence? What would you co- consider us pretty smart guys? Yeah, not so smart, kind of dodos. What would you? Um, I would say we're probably smarter than the average picnic basket. <laughs> hey, boo boo. <laughs> uh, can we get sued for that copyright infringement? I didn't say it right. So. Okay, perfect. <laughs> With the forte of the twisted ten. Mm-hmm. One of the hosts comes up with the top 10 list and surprises the other host on the show, and we review the top 10 list that host created. This week, this top 10 list is specifically dealing with IQ. So these are 10, Ooh. the top 10 facts or factoids or unbelievable truths about IQ tests and a little bit about their history and things like that, but specifically dealing with intelligence and some things that Ooh. I'm sure you had never thought about that affect a person's IQ or affect an individual's IQ. That's interesting. <clears throat> Have you ever taken an IQ test before? Uh, just some sort of bullshit one online. <laughs> yeah, some of those are actually pretty pretty accurate. Uh, they don't. <laughs> the best way to do an IQ test is with a you know with an actual doctor or a, a psychiatrist right. doing the test to you to watch your reaction time. You know, study right. how you how you react to those questions. But yeah, I've done a bunch of them online too. I actually did one when I was in high school, and that's where I based right. my IQ test from. So we'll go we'll go through this, and then we'll see where we rate. You know, Ooh, based yikes. on based on the charts. Okay, <clears throat> kind of scared now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go over a little bit of history first. So, an IQ sure. test, as we know it today, began with a Stanford Binet test or Binet test. Actually, it's the Stanford Binet test. Uh, Theodore Simon and Alfred Binet devised the IQ test in 1905. So it's it's a little it's a little old. And it's uh it's dated. Did you say the chipmunks came up with this? <laughs> Would you say? Yeah, Alvin and uh, Alvin and Theodore. Uh, no, it's Alfred. And uh, Jean Binet Ramsey. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, their post test analysis was used to indicate a need for more teaching and didn't necessarily imply the inability to learn. The philosophy is still held today with professionals and researchers. So the original Alfred. Is it the original Stanford Binet test is where IQ tests were based, and that was you know well over a hundred years ago. Hmm. Um, today, there's something a little bit more commonly used called the WISC four test or WISC is what they call it. Hmm. Uh, that was that was written by uh, or developed by David Weschler in 1974. So it's more it's more current. Uh, it tests for verbal IQ, performance IQ, picture completion, coding, picture arrangement, block design, and object assembly. So you know, just to just to set it into a basis, it, it covers a lot of stuff. And, it you know, there's a few things that IQ tests don't take into account, like a person's creativity. You know, right. there's a lot of things that make up a person's actual intelligence. Yeah, that are I always wondered, like, like, is that how how factual is that number? Like, they say, well, I have an IQ of over 220 or whatever. I don't remember what a good number is. But, I mean, okay, well, you know. It's a good transition because guess what I have right here? Oh. I've got up? the scores. Now – Originally, 
the the IQ test, and I'll cover that. Actually, that's that's number ten. I don't want to get to that yet, but I'll go over the score. So we'll start below twenty. Pro, below a twenty score on a on an IQ test is profoundly disabled. It goes from twenty to forty nine is severely disabled. Fifty to sixty nine is moderately dis, moderate disability. Seventy to seventy nine is mild disability. Eighty to eighty nine is considered <laughs> dull. <laughs> dull. I would hate to have the IQ label of dull. <laughs> 90 to 109, it's a pretty big jump, is uh, considered average. 110 to 119 is high. 120 to 144 is considered exceptional. And then above 145, according to the WISC, developed by David Weschler, is considered genius. So there's your ranges of IQs. I actually you know, felt pretty good about this. When I was in high school, I took my first test, and I've taken a few since then. I scored a 141. I was stoked. Of course, I didn't know what it meant at a time, but now looking back at that, I'm like, hey, that's that's actually pretty cool. So, I mean, so you're a genius? Uh, I am considered exceptional. I'm not genius. Oh, exceptional. My mom said I was special. I don't know what that meant, but <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I know what she meant now. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you, I'm going to throw a question out there. All right. This is a, one of a, an example of an IQ test, and this is something you should be able to do in your head. Okay. I mean, unless you're like tw- severely disabled 20 yeah. to 49 scale. <laughs> This is the test for TAC, and listeners, do this in your head. Don't don't you know? Don't do this on paper or anything. Just do it in your head. So we're going to start with take a thousand. That's just simply the numbers. This is a number number game. Okay. Take a thousand and add forty to it. Okay. Now add another thousand. Okay. Now add thirty. Okay. Now add another thousand. Okay. Now add twenty. Okay. Now add another thousand. Okay. Now add ten. Okay. What's the total? Is it 5,000? No. 90% of people that test that say it's 5,000. It's not. You transitioned the one and carried it over to the five or to the four. Oh, fucking case. A. It's 4,100. Yeah, 4,100. Don't feel Damn dumb. It's... I did the same fucking thing when I was reading. I'm like, oh, this is great. Let me do this attack. And I'm like, oh, I missed it. Fuck. Um, I'm an idiot. I'm dull. Yeah. 4,100 <laughs> is the answer to that question. But don't worry. Most people get that wrong anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You're dull. <laughs> I'm dull. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So... <laughs> IQ tests, this is number 10, so the top 10 uh, factoid about IQ tests and IQ in general. IQ tests were originally used to diagnose mental retardation. Now, you always hear people huh. joke and use that, you know, starting to become a taboo word, calling somebody retarded. Well, the basis behind that word is a level of their IQ, their intelligence mm-hmm. quote. It's a level, it's a measurement. So that's where retarded or retardation originally came from yeah, that word was always uh kind of banned in my house growing up we were never allowed to say that's retarded you're retarded and so i've never said that word like that i've never used it and even when i hear like my kids say it i'm just like that's not nice yeah that's so. not a good word it's becoming more socially taboo i mean it wasn't <clears throat> originally built to be a taboo word or a derogatory word it was meant to be a label or a definition for something yeah. but not not that for for the most part, IQ tests are a measure of intelligence and career success, <clears throat> but it was once primarily used to diagnose mental retardation. An IQ, an IQ score below 70 was considered a benchmark for mental retardation, according to the Bennett Simons test from the early 1900s. So, hmm. Hmm. Tack, you're not retarded. Don't worry. <clears throat> oh, are you sure, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number nine. IQ tests are rooted. Now, you may know this, but IQ Wait, tests. Number nine. Mm-hmm. What was 10? 10 was the IQ tests were originally used to diagnose. Boy, I, I sound a little drunk when I said that. Originally <laughs> used to diagnose mental retardation. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, number nine. Yeah, these are facts, factoids, and some things you probably didn't necessarily know about IQ gotcha. and IQ tests. Okay. Number nine, IQ tests are rooted in cu- cultural and ethnic bias. Can you see that? Can you see that angle? <clears throat> they are ethnic bias, meaning... And cult- culturally bias. Well, I could see that. I mean, is all the tests the same? Is the same questions for everybody? That's a very good perspective. No, they're uh, yes, they're they're for the most part they're the same. Such your phone ding and you fucking rookie. I have it turned off. <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> now I do. Man, sorry, it's my first day. <laughs> <laughs> One of the main criticisms of IQ tests is they show bias against cultural and ethnic groups based on questions asked in the test. Same questions asked to every group of people from every location. Well, that makes sense because, you know, like if it's like, I don't know, I can't even think. If train A leaves, you know, station, whatever, and train B, blah, 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 they could ask that question to, uh, there's a tribe in Tana (laughs) (laughs) that I've recently learned about. 
Yeah, they don't even know what a train is. <clears throat> yeah, well, they probably do. But just as an example, they may not. You know, or there's people on the world that have never seen a train, don't even are a little unsure on what a train is. So, but they could be super smart and intelligent. Exactly. The, genius if the current IQ tests don't take into consideration things like cognitive styles or communication skills or right. cultural ethnic group possessions and things like it. There's sure. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of things that aren't, are not considered in that. So, mm-hmm. yep. Uh, IQ tests are racist. That's what this says. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Um, I, number eight, number eight on the list of facts and factoids you may not have known about IQ and IQ tests. Mm-hmm. IQ has a direct relation to head size. <laughs> to somebody's head. The physical size of their <clears throat> cranium could, well, actually has a direct relation to the score of their IQ. Isn't that interesting? interesting? It's been discovered that those with lower IQs have a less efficient nervous system than those with higher. But yeah, so the the size of your head, the, the amount of ability for your brain to fire, you know, synapses, I guess, is hmm. is a direct relation and a direct tie to a person's IQ. So Charlie Brown... Genius. Super smart. Yeah, genius. Yep. He's, gotcha. he's, uh, he actually, he, didn't he play piano? Oh, no, that was Linus. Yeah, Linus, Linus played piano. The creativity is, is a big, is a big piece of, of that as well. And that, that kind of <coughs> brings us to like maybe, uh, somebody with Asperger's. Well, for, for instance, let's go back to Charlie Brown. Apparently a genius, but horrible with the chicks and social, 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 social skills. Social awkwardness. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. A lot of, a lot of, uh, so I have a friend that is raising a kid that has Asperger's and uh, very talented, very gifted, can pick up a guitar and play it. And he's I think he's 12. I don't, I don't know. Got a lot of very good positive skills. However, his ability to understand social cues is just not there. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of a movie theater, you know, when he has to pee, he he yells and goes and does his thing. He, I mean, he doesn't pee in the theater, but he gets <laughs> up and goes. You know, yeah. he, he doesn't have those social cues to understand, you know, couth or politically correctness or things like that. It just doesn't work. Yeah, I also have a friend as well whose son. It's a, well, yeah. So yeah. anyway, moving on. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I don't want to go too much in detail. I would love to, to have our friend April in on this one because she studies behavioral sciences oh, right. and specifically yeah. deals with kids. I didn't even think about this when I was writing this, <clears throat> this particular one. I should have invited her up here for that. Um, all right, so number seven. Number seven on the list of the top ten Adam's perspectives on uh, IQ factoids. <laughs> Uh, facts and factories from IQ tests and IQ scores. Hmm. Did you know, Tack, that IQ varies between the sexes, between men and women? <clears> hmm. <throat> I, okay. Yeah, this, the, so this is rooted in actual scientific numbers. This isn't Adam's misogynist perspective on this. <laughs> <laughs> but studies have been conducted to compare IQ levels of men and women and have found there's a slight difference between male and female IQ scores. Men tend to have a score higher in some sections like spatial awareness, while women tend to score higher on language development and emotional quotes. Okay, I get that. I mean, not this specifically, but I get that men will score higher in certain things versus women will score higher in their own things. So that makes sense, of course. There are slight variances, but the overall <laughs> intelligence is the same. So really, it breaks oh. down to, you know, where Tack might score better in math and Adam might score better in literature we're going to have the same score at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It's, right, right, it's right. that kind of difference. But, hmm, interesting. Thought we were smarter than women, but. <clears throat> All right. So yeah. number six, low IQ is linked to higher levels of suicides. Way to bring the show down, I know. But hmm. lower IQ is specifically dealt or is specifically linked to higher levels of suicides. Uh, Swedish researchers have found a link between lower IQ scores and higher suicide feelings. According to them, the lower IQ means less ability to solve problems which makes people less capable of dealing with mental stress. Hence, suicide feelings may be more likely in those those candidates. Well, I can see something like that. Like, let's say the world is falling or crashing down all around you. Um, well, I mean, I mean, you really got to get down to a root problem here. I mean, if you're not, if you have intelligence issues, maybe it has to do with maybe your job, your income, whatever. That could be money problems. Therefore, you weren't smart enough. You didn't go to college, or maybe you failed out of college, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could have problems, and also maybe if the world is crashing all around you, and maybe you're not intelligent enough to come up with a solution. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly right. So where where you know my readings pointed was the inability to process <clears throat> or to deal with an issue, irrelevant of the issue. It could be something as small as 
you know, uh, I have to navigate my house at night in the dark to, uh, I need to somehow figure out how to budget, you know, my income to my debt. It, it could be, you know, little to big yeah. things. It's, it's the inability to process those trains of thought, no matter where they lie. And when some of those problems become very big, which, you know, people have problems, everybody's got problems. <clears throat> I got problems. I, I got 99, but a bit, yeah, Hey, you're, you actually fit that song pretty well right now. Don't you? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Before we take a break, I want to read. Uh, let's go through the top. Out. It says we've already done 10 through 6. We'll get to okay. uh, 5 through 1 after the break. But I'm going to give you five of the top 10 uh, uh, celebrity IQs that you may not have otherwise mm. understood or may may not have otherwise known. Gotcha. So let's start with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger, what do you think his IQ is? Considering the chart I gave you earlier, right? Where do you think Arnold will will sit in this list? <clears throat> well, he's a sharp guy, I would imagine. Good business guy, is in politics. I Don't mean, use my IQ as a as a as a <laughs> uh, litmus test. I, you know that that was kind of <laughs> maybe it was incorrect, but it was that's not a, not a <laughs> good <gotcha>. judge. <laughs> But I mean, he did run a state for almost ten years. So. <laughs> now that doesn't necessarily mean you're smart. <laughs> that just means you're likable. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I would say he was like roughly, maybe not genius, but whatever, just below that. I he, would imagine Arnold Schwarzenegger comes in at a one thirty five IQ, which what did we say that was exceptional? Actually, almost all of these people come in at exce- exceptional rates. <clears throat> so. Coming in at 140 IQ, I have four candidates. They're all four women. Mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. No, surprise, I'm just kidding. Surprise, surprise. Natalie Portman, 140 IQ. Yeah, she's smarty pants. She went to Yale, I think. Shakira. Or Columbia. I forget. Shakira, Shakira? is Columbia. Yeah. Shakira came from Columbia. Well, I meant the university. I mean, uh, Medellin. Natalie Portman, I think, went to Columbia or Yale. I forget which one. Hmm. I think Columbia. Shakira's got 140 IQ and hips to kill. <laughs> Uh, Madonna, 140. Don't lie, I think is what it is. <laughs> Madonna as well, 140 IQ. Hmm. And Gina Davis wraps up the. She's a smarty pants. She's part of like Menza or some shit, I think. Hmm. Um, we'll get to the next five after the break and after the other, uh, the other top five in our list. But there are one, two, three, four men and one woman that round up the top five in that, in that category. So nice. we'll hit those when we come back. Um, thanks for listening to the Twisted Ten. We'll be right back. Check out our new sponsor, Last Drop Vape. They make a premium e-liquid line that is simply fantastic. I vape a lot and use Last Drop Vape's blueberry and strawberry cream. They also have a chocolate that is spot on. All of Last Drop Vape's premium e-liquids are proudly made in the USA. Their e-juice is bottled in a clean, certified, laboratory used in 100% FDA compliant machinery, meeting AEMSA standards and future FDA regulations. Visit them at lastdropvape.com or on Facebook at facebook.com slash lastdropvape. If you are interested in becoming a distributor, you can contact them at their website under the wholesaler section. Welcome back to the Twisted Ten. We just heard the uh, ten through six on the top ten for facts about IQ tests and IQ in general. What do you think of those so far, Tack? Uh, it's interesting. Um, is, that a, is that a nice way to say boring? No, I don't think it's boring. <laughs> I think it's interesting. Um, uh, I, I, I've always wondered if the IQ tests were kind of bullshit, or maybe they're not bullshit. But like you said, like it's it's fascinating to find that you know they are all the same. Which I thought, I didn't know they were so much all the same. Because like you were saying how somebody from another part of the world or different ethnicity, <laughs> ethnicity, <laughs> how do you say that word? Ethnicity. Um, would score differently. And yeah. that, it doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem right. And so anytime somebody says to me, well, I have a very high IQ. I was tested. You know, I'm like, I was just like. Do yeah. that, which is, you know, jerk off hand is, motion. Is that what you did when I told you my IQ? <laughs> no, because you were just telling me what you got <laughs> on, your, on the test, you know. He, he, he gave me the hand motion, listeners. <laughs> so when people say, well, I have a very high IQ, I'm just like, well, whatever. Maybe you did that day. Or maybe you scored a certain number that some mm-hmm. dude says that it means you're smart. But 
I didn't actually put this on the list, but one of the things I researched while, you know, checking out uh, all the different tests and the, the variables that go into IQ is exactly that. It's a person's mood. You know, what happened in their life the last couple of days that could affect their potential outcome for their IQ test. So their mm-hmm. demeanor, their, you know, their social status, oh, their, sure, yeah. their relation status, all of that goes into play. Um, how much sleep they got the last, <clears throat> you know, the night prior, all of that Definitely. goes into play. Uh, your, your ability to process information at certain times a day are different. Like some people are morning people. Some people are night people. So it, it, all of that stuff needs to go into, into factor. Yeah. All right. So tackle, let's talk about your parents for a second. Would you consider your parents smart people like high IQ considered, you know, socially smart? (laughs) Well, it's kind of funny. My mother is actually one of those people that, well, I tested very high on the IQ. (laughs) Did you make the hand jerking motion to your mom? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, it's just one of those like, eh, whatever. But, um, but I, yeah, I consider both of them intelligent. Okay. Pretty smart people, yeah, that, absolutely. That votes well in your favor because number five on our list is genetics make up at a top end of eighty percent of your IQ. So no matter how much you educate yourself, or you know how much you go to school, or change your social, or change your your, your environmental variables that could affect you, eighty. It's actually sixty to eighty, but eighty percent of your IQ hmm. is genetic. So if you're predisposed to learn well or to uh, test well or to, you know, prove yourself cognitively in these tests, then you're, you know, you're going to do better because of your genetics. So if your parents are smart, Tack, yeah, you're, you're a step ahead. Well, yeah, but it's different kind of smarts, you know, like my dad excels in math, like he is outstanding in math, um, where me and my mother are horrible in math. My mother was dyslexic with numbers and things like that. She couldn't do numbers very well. So, and I always have a thirst for knowledge all the time. So every, well, I try to learn something new every day, but still, um, it's not going to help me on math. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, understood. Yeah, it says environmental variables can mean a loss or gain of a few points, you know, here or there, but it pales in comparison to what you're born with. So interesting. All right. Number four. I think number four is going to be your favorite and you probably would have picked this as number one. Okay. However, we're going to go with it anyway. Number four, breastfeeding can increase a child's IQ by three to eight points. Wow. That's an, and that's a big number, especially <clears throat> that early in the stage. That's like cheating your way up in IQ. <laughs> I don't think I was breastfed, though. Oh, that, that certainly explains a, a lot to <laughs> me and to the listeners. No, I'm just kidding. You weren't breastfed? I don't think so. No? Hmm. I, I think I was. I don't, I don't, I never really had that conversation with my mom. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure that I was, but not sure. It says going beyond the control factors of baby's closeness with their mother during breastfeeding. Children who are breastfed have a higher IQ, three to eight points higher by age three than their non breastfed peers. So moms out there, if you're considering it, you can make your kids smarter. They have the ability to and maybe my, take care of you later in life because of it. My son uh, was not best breastfed either. So. It hurt too much for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the reason why they're, his mother... Make your nipples dark, too. She was always like... Well, because she tried it with his sister's um, twins, and she was like, tried it once, and was like, it hurts, and then just never did it again. So, hmm. Interesting. She's kind of a weenie. That's one of the few things that kids have the predisp... Well, not predisposition, but the... Uh, are born with... Um, What's the the sucking ability? Yeah, so searching for a nipple is is a um, inherent. Uh, I know what you're trying to say. You're, what's the word? There's uh, learned behavior, and then there's instinct. God damn, instinct, that was hard yeah. to say. <laughs> and there's only two things humans are born with for instincts. Hmm. One is to search for a nipple. That's one for sure. The other is the fear of heights. A human baby is afraid of heights, irrelevant to learned or. And this is all what you learn when you're born. And interestingly enough, I still do both to this day. <laughs> it's like nipples and are afraid of heights. I like <laughs> searching it. for nipples. And- yep. Yep. Huh. <clears throat> All right. So number three, <laughs> if you have an IQ of at least 115, according to these lists, you can do any job. It says people with low and high IQ scores can work almost any job at almost any level, but it becomes increasingly difficult to perform well in very complex or fluid jobs, such as management in an ambiguous, changing, unpredictable field. Uh, those with higher IQs 
have no restrictions of what they can do. They can make those decisions quicker. They can, you know, think on mm. their feet. They can manage people. They can deal with stress a lot better than those with lower IQs. And for whatever reason, they chose 115 as that litmus. Let me see what that was. That's just in the high range. Yeah, it's, it's not, not very high. I think it's just a little above dull. <laughs> yeah. It's two levels above dull. dull yeah, I know a few managers right? that would fall under dull. So. <laughs> Definitely. I know a few that might be considered old school, uh, retarded level. <laughs> Saying school. that scientifically, not uh, not derogatorily. <laughs> right. It's an industry <laughs> term, right? Yeah. Sure. yeah, it's an inside thing. All right, number two on the, the top 10 facts about IQ. When you have a higher IQ... You're more confident. Have you ever seen that, especially that's, with people that we named earlier on that list? Your confidence level changes. Of course, those are stars, so it's a little bit different. It's only if you announce it all the time. You know, kind of like vegans. Not necessarily. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's a good point. Not necessarily. You can see if somebody is confident without them saying or boasting confidence levels. If you're just listening to, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, somebody talk on a podium. You can hear confidence in their voice. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, yeah those, makes sense. Those kinds of things. Successful people in business and athletics and in life can tell you that confidence is half the battle. Having a certain IQ may not tell the whole story, but the popular conception is that it does and that it can be devastating or em- emboldening depending on your depending on your number. Hmm. So question, though, from that statement that you just said. So you're saying having a higher IQ boosts confidence? Is that basically what it's saying? Kind of the other way around. Confidence is um, well, that's what I was a sign. Say. I think Confidence it may... is a sign of, of a higher IQ, according to this. Right. And I think it may work both ways, too. I mean, if you – higher IQ boosts confidence, but if you can boost your confidence, wouldn't that kind of help your IQ? Mm, it wouldn't change your IQ level. You can't manipulate your IQ. That, However, that's you That's another can... good question I was going to ask. Yeah, that's actually, believe it or not, oh, okay. that comes it's back to number up. one. Yeah. Um, your, so your IQ level that you're born with and that you go through life with for the most part doesn't change. It's pretty static. So mm-hmm. what you, you know, the, the, the dice that you roll right at the beginning for the most part are what you're going to have for the rest of your life. Um, there are a few things and that that's number one. So we'll get to that one in just a second, but, um, you can give off with, you know, shit. All of us know the Dodo in high school that was like the, the football jock that was, you know, super confident, had all the confidence in the world, but couldn't count to 10. I mean, we all know that kind of guy, dumb as a can of hammers, but very confident. So you can mask with confidence the you know interpretation right. of, of IQ, but mm-hmm. no, you can't actually change it. You can't uh, you can't force yourself into a higher IQ. Hmm. I mean, this is kind then of, why I go to college. I'm a doctor, so <laughs> well, don't confuse IQ with you know your your breadth of knowledge. So Damn. if you have you know, college teaches you very specific skill sets. Your IQ is what's al- what allows you to absorb those skill sets and then later use them in life. Right, right. So you. it's a different, it's a whole different scale. It's, it's the ability to learn. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yep, absolutely right. And retain and then use those skills right. back. All right, so the number one IQ factoid on this list, on this top 10, mm-hmm. the IQ you're born with is not the same as you age. So while genetics play a large role in determining intelligence factors like education, job type, and even leisurely activities, you can change your intelligence and your IQ as you age, but not really a whole lot. Hmm. It it, it can change, so you can teach yourself how to cope with certain situations better, but you can't go and, you know, read a book and suddenly gain a point. It's not like a, you know, a skill in a game, you know, Hmm. you've leveled up by one level (laughs) for whatever the skill is, but there are certain things you can do that will help you and help your brain map the synapses to learn how to deal with certain situations better. You know, I was going to say, um, interesting. I just was, my brain was kind of working here. So like you, I like how you kind of like brought in the video game kind of metaphor. And so I was thinking, well, like in a lot of games you have, you get what's, you know, experience points, you know, that's what a lot of games call it sometimes. And, um, so I'm thinking like, if there was a way to boost your IQ, it seems as if actual life experience would be the only way to do it. Like meaning like like there was a great line in uh, Goodwill Hunting. You know, where you've seen familiar with the movie. Oh yeah, it's a great movie. Okay. Well Robin Williams is talking with Matt Damon, you know, and Matt Damon's very smart, super smart, but then he says to him, Look, um, 
you may be able to tell me like who painted the Sistine Chapel, but you wouldn't be able to tell me what it smells like. You know what I mean? Hmm. That's a good point. You know, you wouldn't be able to tell me how it feels to do this or what it, you know, but you can quote me off, you know, what the, you know, whatever the facts are about it. Quote, know? quote me off. Is that an intellectual way <laughs> to get your rocks off? Is it? Yeah. Hey, come here, quote come me on, off for quick. On, quote me off. How much is it for, quote, quote me off? <laughs> so, I mean, so do you think that maybe with experience, experience points <laughs> can maybe help raise your <laughs> IQ, your intelligence quotient? I th- I think the only way to answer that is going to be yes, because if you, let's say you're presented with a challenge, you know, on day one and your challenge is, uh, uh, tack to make it from this end of the football field to that end of the football field, you have to go through this obstacle course and your first time through this obstacle course, it's impossible. You cannot do it. And the obstacle course includes physical, uh, uh you know, boundaries that you have to cross as well as mental boundaries that you have to cross. Right. And as you're going through this obstacle course again and again and again, you get better at it and you hone your skills to do it. Mm-hmm. Now, where intelligence quota might come in there would be the person with a higher IQ than TAC might be able to figure out those things faster. Right. So I, I, I don't know. Your ability to manage, take that data in, manage it, and you know change your, per, uh, your approach mm-hmm. um, absolutely can get sharper. Um, you also, when you do right. these tests, you look for things that are – you know, obviously out of order. So the, the numbers games is the easiest one that you're going to take in these IQ tests. Here's a series of numbers, fill in the blank, and there's a missing one in this, that's in there. Right. So the first time you go through it, you're going to try to do division, addition, multiple, whatever it is right, to try right. to figure it out. But it may not have anything to do with that. It may have to do mm-hmm. with the, you know, who the fuck knows? Whatever the hell it is, right. it may have something that's, you know, rhythmic, or it may have something that's deal, dealt with lines or corners or edges or whatever. Yep. It may have nothing to do with the numbers themselves mm-hmm. at all. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you could test better. I don't know if it necessarily would increase your IQ though. I don't know. That would be a really good question for April to follow up with us on. Hmm. April, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, yeah, April, you have to hit us Give up. Give us a shout out hit us up on whatever social media we have for the show. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have Facebook up. So <laughs> hit us up on Facebook. Um, just to, to follow up on that research, have found that popular brain games, like the ones offered in apps and workbooks, um, Delivered on their promise of better memory, attention, and multitasking skills. <laughs> However, when it comes to overall intelligence, studies have shown that those games failed to improve upon IQs. So while those things are great, like Luminosity has got in there, not a sponsor, but I've done got, that before. They've got the times. greatest thing, and yes, they work for you know helping you you know memorize or uh, 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 their brain games that help you think more creatively or think out of the box or get your brain going in certain patterns yeah. is very, very good for your brain, for the health of your brain, but it doesn't necessarily increase IQ. Yeah. So let's wrap up the top five. Uh, that, so that was the last one on the list. Mm-hmm. Let's wrap up the top five celebrities that you may not have thought had this high of an IQ. All right. So number five. So just to recap, we had Arnold Schwarzenegger at 135, Natalie Portman, Shakira, Madonna, and Gina Davis all at 140. And it only goes up from here. I know that, um, can I guess somebody probably on that list? I'll tell you if you get it, yeah. Um, Claire Danes probably nope. on that list? Nope, not really? on this list. Yeah, no, she's not on this one. Not to say she doesn't have a high IQ, but yeah, where I found these, you know, right. the celebrities, it, she wasn't on this. Um, so number five, Steve Martin, 142. Hmm. Um, number four is Nolan Gould. Do you know who that is? No. He is Luke Dumfrey from ABC's hit comedy Modern Family. The kid. Uh, what? Well, okay. Don't get mad at me now. No. I've never seen the show, but that's only because I want to watch it from the beginning, and it doesn't stream anywhere from the beginning. It's a damn good so, show. Yeah. That's the new Al Bundy show. Yeah, yeah. Um, that kid, the kid that's in that show, has 150 <laughs> IQ. Fucking incredibly <laughs> smart kid. It's cool. Um, I'm going to do a, a motion in the studio to see if Tac can get this <laughs> can, can get this uh, this woman. All right, so Adam's spreading his legs and putting them back together. <laughs> who, who, who am I portraying here? That's uh, what's her head? Um, you know, uh, what's her what's her beaver? S- 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 <laughs> what's her Sharon beaver? Stone. Sharon Stone. Yep, yeah, Sharon Stone's it. rocking a one fifty four beaver uh, IQ. Yes, <laughs> she's uh, she's considered a genius according to the IQ scales. <laughs> uh, number two, maybe, and I don't know. I, I know you're a movie aficionado. Yeah. You like certain directors. This is a director. Okay. Also a, a star and not really – he cameos in every movie he makes. So let's see if you can guess based uh, on that. Shyamalan and Ding Dong? No, no. Not M. Night Shyamalan. No. no. Um, <laughs> what are the director cameos? 
questionably some of the most badass movies ever made. That should that should give it away. And the director cameos? Mm-hmm. Ugly motherfucker too. Just ugly. <laughs> well, now I start. Now I was thinking of uh, what's his head. <laughs> Sharon Stone? Oh, no, that's... <laughs> yeah, Sharon Stone, no. Um, shit. Who? Who? Just... Yeah. Quentin Tarantino. Oh, yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, that's Quentin... not what I was thinking of, but yeah, it makes sense now. Quentin... Yeah, he does cameo. Quentin Tarantino, 160 IQ. <laughs> yeah. And to wrap up the celebrities with the top IQs that I happened to find while looking this afternoon. Yep. Um, this guy has 184 IQ. Just, just off the fucking charts. Jesus. His work has been heard in Family Guy, The Simpsons, Grand Theft Auto, and Disney's Hercules. Let's see if you can get the voice actor. Oh my god. He's he's also a regular actor too, but he's more known yeah. for his voice acting. Can you give me some more? <laughs> uh, I didn't write any more down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just so didn't no. know if you knew any of the like, oh, what no. else he was in. Or? No, I don't. I don't know. I was. I actually had to look him up. I didn't recognize him by his name until I read a little bit about him. But it's hmm. with 184 IQ. Topping off the list is James Woods. James Woods. Yep. Yeah. 184 IQ. <laughs> Fucking intelligent. Yeah, on the sim or on uh, Family Guy. You know who he plays on Family Guy? Uh-uh. He plays James Woods himself. Wait a minute. He's a voice actor for himself. Yep. And on The Simpsons, you know who he plays? James Woods. James Woods. Oh, God. He yeah. plays himself. <laughs> okay. I see uh, I see the pattern here. Okay. <laughs> and he was on Entourage. As himself? As himself. God damn it. But that's the only time. The rest of the time he's an actor. Well, he's an actor anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, James well, cool. Woods. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I love me some family guy. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. So what would you think of the, uh, the top ten this week? <laughs> Uh, I think I am retarded. You're, du- you're dumber <laughs> for having listened to this <laughs> top ten. Can you lower it. your IQ? <laughs> uh, Does smoking weed really lower your IQ? <laughs> I think it puts you. Cells? I think it puts you on a whole other plane. You have an interesting theory on on getting intoxicated with foreign substances, not necessarily weed. You know, when you get to the point where you get so drunk that you do not remember what you did the next day. No, the blackout drunk. You never been there? No, never been there. All right, well, I've been there a bunch no. of times. Wow. Well. Getting blackout drunk is drinking too much and your brain pretty much just shuts off. Your body is still going fully, you know, energized and you're still doing things and still, you know, whatever, almost like zombie effect, but you're still, you're still doing stuff, but you don't remember the next day. Okay. I have a theory behind that. A theory? Uh, A theory. I think when you get to that point, you enter a different state of consciousness and then you can remember all those other times when you were blackout drunk because it's a whole nother level, a whole nother plane of existence. (laughs) I think that's what happens. But... So how would you test that theory? Let's go get drunk. <laughs> and so, like, you can't say, I'm at the blackout stage, because you don't know. Well, the other problem with that is when you get to the blackout stage, you just don't give a shit, and you, you go, <laughs> yeah, like, good luck trying to sit this fucker down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's blackout drunk. He's peeing on his leg. I mean, what, what do you expect? <laughs> hey, Adam, 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 over here. <laughs> huh? Huh? What's going on? <laughs> do you remember the time? <laughs> Getting drunk, bitch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, pretty cool. much. That's how it would be. Well, all right. Thanks for listening this week, guys. We appreciate it. We're going to come back next week when Tack's going to bring us another uh, top 10 list. Oh, I got a good one. Oh, boy. Actually, I don't know yet. I got to do homework. Oh, damn. I was hoping for a little bit of a teaser. No. Not, so the other, host idea, is not, the other host is not supposed to know, but teasers aren't, aren't that bad. Aren't, aren't <laughs> yeah. too bad. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Check us out on Facebook. Um, we'll have our social media links up there real soon. If you're uh, if you're interested in this, if you if you like this content, listen to our Living Podcariously podcast. That's uh, a lot more raw and unfiltered and, and unscripted, uh, and it's just a bunch of goofballs sitting around having a good time drinking some beer. So check out Living Podcariously. Thank you for listening to Twisted Ten on behalf of Tack and Adam. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. See you. other hosts and just either were fascinated with how intelligent they sounded or scratched your head saying, how the hell does this guy get sponsors? Cause he's a dumbass or, <laughs> or she's a dumb, you know, whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, where would you rate us in comparison? Cause you know us pretty well. I mean, you know, you pretty well.
Where would you rate us? I like to think I do. Where would you rate us on intelligence? What would you consider us pretty smart guys? Not so smart, kind of dodos? What would you... Um, I would say we're probably smarter than the average picnic basket. Hey, (laughs) boo-boo. Can we get sued for that copyright infringement? I didn't say it right. Okay, perfect. (laughs) With the forte of the Twisted Ten, Mm -hmm. one of the hosts comes up with the top ten list and surprises the other host on the show, and we review the top ten list that host created. This week, this top 10 list is specifically dealing with IQ. So these are 10, the top 10 facts or factoids or unbelievable truths about IQ tests and a little bit about their history and things like that, but specifically dealing with intelligence and some things that I'm sure you had never thought about that affect a person's IQ or affect an individual's IQ. That's interesting. Have you ever taken an IQ test before? Uh, Just some sort of... Bullshit one online. <laughs> yeah, some of those are actually pretty pretty accurate. Uh, they don't. The best way to do an IQ test is with a you know with an actual doctor or a, a psychiatrist right. doing the test to you to watch your reaction time. You know, study right. how you how you react to those questions. But yeah, I've done a bunch of them online too. I actually did one when I was in high school, and that's where I based right. my IQ test from. So we'll go we'll go through this, and then we'll see where we rate. You know, Ooh, based yikes. on based on the charts. Okay, <clears throat> kind of scared now. <laughs> Um, let's go over a little bit of history first. So an IQ sure. test, as we know it today, began with a Stanford Binet test or Binet test. Actually, it's the Stanford Binet test. Uh, Theodore Simon and Alfred Binet devised the IQ test in 1905. So it's it's a little it's a little old. And it's uh it's dated. Did you say the Chipmunks came up with this? <laughs> <laughs> Would you say? Yeah, Alvin and uh, Alvin and Theodore. Uh, no, it's Alfred. And uh, Jean Binet Ramsey. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um. Their post-test analysis was used to indicate a need for more teaching and didn't necessarily imply the inability to learn. The philosophy is still held today with professionals and researchers. So the original Alfred, is it the original Stanford Binet test is where IQ tests were based. And that was, you know, well over a hundred years ago. Hmm. Um, today there's something a little bit more commonly used called the WISC4 test or WISC is what they call it. Uh, that was that was written by uh, or developed by David Weschler in 1974. So it's more it's more current. Uh, it tests for verbal IQ, performance IQ, picture completion, coding, picture arrangement, block design, and object assembly. So you know just to just to set it into a basis, it it covers a lot of stuff. And it you know there's a few things that IQ tests don't take into account, like a person's creativity. You know right. there's a lot of things that make up a person's actual intelligence. Yeah, that are I was wondering like like is that a- how how factual is that number? Like they say, well, I have. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to The Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique, host-created top ten lists, recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. All right, welcome to your second episode of The Twisted Ten. Uh, We take top ten lists from our lives, from our experiences, and from our influences and bring them to the listeners. Uh, these are not ten, top ten lists that you'll find online. I mean, you might find something similar, but you're not going to find what comes out of our imaginations. Uh, I'm one of your hosts today. My name is Adam, and sitting to my left is... I am Tack. How you doing, Tack? What's going on, buddy? Man, not a whole lot. Seems like it was just yesterday we were recording the first episode. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, so, let's hop right into this, Tack. Would you... So I've listened to a lot of podcasts. I've heard, you know, a ton of them. You host uh, Taint Funny. We host Living Podcariously. We now host yep. this as well. I listen to Star Talk. I listen to Nerdist. I li- whatever. I listen to a right. ton of podcasts. I know you do too. I do too. Out of all those podcasts, have you ever sat back and listened to the to the I mean, IQ of over two hundred and twenty or whatever? I don't remember what a good number is, but I mean, okay, well, you know, it's a good transition because guess what I have right here? Oh, I've got up? the scores now. Originally. The the IQ test, and I'll cover that. Actually, that's that's number 10. I don't want to get to that yet, but I'll go over the score. So we'll start below 20. Pro, below a 20 score on, a, on an IQ test is profoundly disabled. It goes from 20 to 49 is severely disabled. 50 to 69 is moderately dis, moderate disability. 70 to 79 is mild disability. 80 to 89 
is considered <laughs> dull. <laughs> dull. I would hate to have the IQ label of dull. <laughs> 90 to 109, it's a pretty big jump, is uh, considered average. 110 to 119 is high. 120 to 144 is considered exceptional. And then above 145, according to the WISC, developed by David Weschler, is considered genius. So there's your ranges of IQs. I actually, you know, felt pretty good about this. When I was in high school, I took my first test, and I've taken a few since then. I scored a 141. I was stoked. Of course, I didn't know what it meant at a time, but now looking back at that, I'm like, hey, that's that's actually pretty cool. So, I mean, so you're a genius? Uh, I am considered exceptional. I'm not genius. Oh, exceptional. My mom said I was special. I don't know what that meant, but... <laughs> I guess I, I guess I know what you meant now. <laughs> so I'm going to give you, I'm going to throw a question out there. All right. This is a, one of a, an example of an IQ test. And this is something you should be able to do in your head. Okay. I mean, unless you're like t- severely disabled 20 yeah. to 49 scale. <laughs> this is the test for TAC. And listeners, do this in your head. Don't, don't, you know, don't do this on paper or anything. Just do it in your head. So we're going to start with take a thousand. That's just simply the numbers. This is a number, number game. Okay. Take a thousand and add 40 to it. Okay. Now add another thousand. Okay. Now add 30. Okay. Now add another 1,000. Okay. Now add 20. Okay. Now add another 1,000. Okay. Now add 10. Okay. What's the total? Is it 5,000? No. 90% of people that test that say it's 5,000. It's not. You transitioned the one and carried it over to the five or to the four. Oh, fucking A. It's 4,100. Yeah, 4,100. Don't feel Damn dumb. It's... I did the same fucking thing when I was reading. I'm like, oh, this is great. Let me do this attack. And I'm like, oh, I missed it. Fuck. Um, I'm an idiot. I'm dull. Yeah. 4,100 <laughs> is the answer to that question. But don't worry. Most people get that wrong anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You're dull. <laughs> I'm dull. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So <laughs> IQ tests. This is number 10. So the top 10 uh, factoid about IQ tests and IQ in general. IQ tests were originally used to diagnose mental retardation. Now, you always hear people huh. joke and use that, you know, starting to become a taboo word, calling somebody retarded. Well, the basis behind that word is a level of their IQ, their intelligence mm-hmm. quote. It's a level. It's a measurement. So that's where retarded or retardation originally came from. Yeah, that word was always uh, kind of banned in my house growing up. 